So if you're someone who says, I don't know if this is going to work, therefore I'm not going to do it, you are correct. It may not work. But it is because it may not work that is why you should do it. Because it's never going to work until you keep trying. So hard work doesn't matter, only results matter. For the longest time, I've had the belief that it doesn't matter how hard you work in life, it's only really the results that matter. People won't really care about how hard you work unless you give them the results they want to see. You can spend days studying for a test, putting countless, countless hours into something, or dedicating a lot of time towards whatever thing you're working hard at. None of it matters if you don't produce results that you or others find satisfactory. This mentality has pretty much been more harmful to me than it is helpful, as it has pretty much stopped me from working on anything with any amount of effort. I pretty much look at anything I want to do and go, I wish I could do this, but I don't know if my work can produce the results necessary to achieve success for me or others, so why bother? I really want to improve my life and work to make myself a better person, but I just fear that I won't get the results needed to feel like I accomplished anything I want to do. I really want to stop thinking like this, but it's just been really hard to get out of this mentality. If anybody wants to help me out with why hard work matters or how to get out of this mentality, it would be appreciated. Sorry if this comes off as a ramble or anything. I've been really nervous to post this. <laughs> okay. So you know how sometimes I make it, I try to bully Twitch chat and I say, owned, GG. So I want to, I want to actually give this person MVP because I can imagine that this person when they were thinking about posting this, maybe their mind said, I wish I could post something and ask for help, but I don't know if posting something and asking for help will actually help. Therefore, I'm not going to bother. And what did they do? They posted anyway. So this, whatever happened here, is the first step to fixing this problem. And what do you guys notice about this sentence? awareness of your internal emotional state instead of this logical pile of shit. Do you guys like how more simply can I say this? It's a beautiful illustration. Hey, I think this way. It doesn't help. I'm nervous. And they act. It's a perfect example of exactly what you need to do. Because this is what the mind is going to tell you. It's going to produce the false rational thoughts. Wrong knowledge. And so the first thing that I'd say is, how are you able to make this post? What did your mind tell you would happen if you made this post? It's kind of interesting, but let's, let's answer in a little bit more of a complete way. So if your mind is telling you all the time that results are the only things that matter, and because results are the only things that matter, and look at all the evidence that I have. No one cares about how much you studied. They just care about your grades, right? Like, when I apply to college, and here's the evidence, right? So here's the rational mind. When I apply to college, they don't ask how much I studied. They ask me for my transcript, and they make the decision based on the transcript. It's a good argument, right? It's true. It's good. So remember that when your intellect gets hijacked by some emotion, the arguments it comes up with are never false. That's why you can't convince someone, because the arguments they come up with are logical on some level. I don't have an alcohol problem because I'm not in jail. And I know someone who has an alcohol problem and he's in jail. He drives drunk. I don't. Therefore, I don't have a problem. If you talk to a thousand alcoholics who are in denial, they'll draw the bar of who has a problem so that they are on the safe side. That's where they draw the line. The line is a little bit past where I am, right? That's just the nature of rationalization. So how can we approach this? Okay, how can we help someone who thinks to themselves only results matter? Now, I want you guys to pay attention to a couple of things here, okay? None of it matter, none of it matters if you don't produce results that you or others find satisfactory, okay? Achieve success. So I'd start with this question. What do others find satisfactory and what is the nature and origin of success? What does that mean? Like, what is the target you're shooting for? Because it's, it's kind of like a self-fulfilling prophecy. If success means a 4.0, then you're right. The only thing that matters is grades, obviously, right? If, if my standard is like, if success to me is a 4.0, if my success is an outcome, then of course, outcomes are what matters for that success. It's like kind of a no-brainer. 
So if you have a results-oriented perspective on success, then results are going to matter. It's sort of like, you know, if we're judging, if we have a height contest, what matters is your height. It's like the way that we set things up. So instead, what I would encourage you to do is like, think about this post. Was this post a success? Was it, what's the bar that you're measuring against? And this is a common problem that I have with the medical students. I don't, don't work with many of them now, but like a lot of times like medical students are so grades oriented. They're so results oriented. At some point, at some point I kind of like, you know, metaphorically slap them upside the head. And I'm like, you're not here for grades. Who cares about your clinical grade? Like, do you get that two years from now? You're going to walk into a room or you're going to be like at a party and someone is going to ask the question, is there a doctor here? And then like someone's going to point to you and they're like, that, that person's a doctor. And then you're going to have to figure out what to do with another human being. That's why you should study. Who the hell cares what grade you get? Like you're studying because the information has value in and of itself that will become practically useful for you at some point. It's absolutely terrifying. It's the scariest damn thing. And so I'd say like, what is, how do you define success? And how do you define what is satisfactory? How do you define what other, you know, what other people find satisfactory? Like what, where does that come from? Because as long as you're playing a game that is rigged to be outcome oriented, you're going to find that no individual thing will feel like enough. There's a second cognitive trap here, which is that the feeling of enough is like, will paralyze you. So let me just give you guys an example. If I'm results focused, let's say I want to climb to the top of a mountain. I look there and I say, okay, how do I get to the top of that mountain? And I take one step forward. And then I look at the top of the mountain. Have I made progress? No. Am I any closer? No. It's still the same distance away. Every step you take is going to feel insufficient if you are focused on your end goal. Technically, have I moved forward? Yes, but that's not what my mind is going to tell me. Because remember, my mind is thinking about the, uh, the result, right? Like, what does this, mind, bro, this person's mind tell him? I wish I could do this, but I don't know if my work can produce the results necessary to, to achieve success, so why bother? Why bother trying unless success is guaranteed? And if you think about it, like, nothing you do is going to guarantee success. And so you're setting up a situation for yourself where you're unable to act, which is exactly what this person's problem is. And they even recognize it's a problem. So what do we do? And so it's odd, but what you have to do is let go of success, right? So then like the bar is not getting to the top of the mountain. The bar is how many steps am I going to take? The bar is not getting six pack abs. The bar is not losing 50 pounds. The bar is, am I going to, it's not even going to the gym every day. Be careful because that's an outcome. The bar is, am I going to go to the gym today? Am I going to exercise today? So you need to sh shift your mindset from a performance-oriented mindset to a growth-oriented mindset. And this is work that Carol Dweck did an awesome job of sort of thinking about. So she hit on, on it that way. The other way to kind of think about it is from a yogic perspective, karma far. As a human being, you are not entitled to the fruits of your actions. All you are entitled to is actions. As a human being, you do not get to control results. I know it sounds weird. You don't get to control results. All you get to control is actions. So as long as you are concerned at all about controlling a particular outcome, that is something that you will never be able to succeed in. I know it sounds kind of weird, but we think we can control results, but we can't. Any job interview I go into, I don't have the ability to get that job. I can't control that. All I can control is whether I walk into the interview. All I can control is whether I do my homework the day before, whether I learn about the com uh, company or not. I can't control whether I get an A or not. All I can control is whether I study. And maybe if I'm woefully unlucky and it turns out that out of the 100 questions, 11 questions were from the one lecture that I missed and couldn't find notes on because my buddy who I relied on for notes never came through, then I'm SOL and I get a B. GG. I can't actually control getting an A. All I can control is what I study. So Carol Dweck sort of talks about this from a research psychological aspect, but this has been known in humanity and in the East for literally thousands of years, that as a human being, you don't control outcomes. You only control actions. So when I got on stream today, can I help you? Think about it for a second. What's going to happen if you come and listen to our streams? 
What's the outcome? You have no clue, as do I. I have no clue. What are we going to talk about? I don't know. Am I going to make sense? Maybe. Am I not going to make sense? Is it going to be confusing? Is my vata going to get the better of me? Maybe. But we're going to show up and we're going to try. And that's why we stream usually three days a week. We're going to roll those dice as much as we can. We're going to keep trying. And if you roll the dice enough, this is what the law of karma says. Generally speaking, if you roll the dice enough, things will end up in your favor. So stop focusing about the success. Adopt a Genshin Impact mindset. You got to grind. Got to put your wallet where your desires are, right? Seriously, life is a gamble chat, right? You got it. The way to succeed, like how do you get a five-star character in Genshin Impact? You roll the dice many, 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 many times. So who is the one who succeeds? It's the people who roll the dice over and over and over again. So if you're someone who says, I don't know if this is going to work, therefore I'm not going to do it, you are correct. It may not work. But it is because it may not work that is why you should do it. Because it's never going to work until you keep trying. Yeah, so also, Chad, I've kind of cooled off on Genshin Impact. It's getting kind of grindy, and I'm not so, so sure I'm going to continue playing it. You know, but I, I, I will say, yeah, so like when someone's a point oh oh one percent So, Chad, I will explain to y'all, okay? Last example of RNG. When I graduated from college with a 2.5 GPA, people know this story, I'm sure. I applied to 140 research positions, got one interview, and 139 rejections. The 141st research position I applied to was Harvard Medical School, and I got it. So keep trying. On my wall, my biggest regret from applying to medical school for three years in a row is that I did not keep all of the rejection letters. What I want on my wall, what deserves to be on my wall, is not my certifications from Harvard Medical School. What deserves to be on my wall is the 90 rejection letters I got. That's my story. It's not about the one that I got right. It's about the 90 applications that I sent out. That's what I'm proud of. And so I encourage each and every one of you, when, when your mind tells you it's not going to be enough, okay. So what are you going to do about it? Are you going to try anyway? Or are you going to let external circumstances dictate your actions? Because if you want to take control of your life, you have to stop letting external circumstances dictate your actions. Controlling your life is about acting. And losing control of your life is letting other things control your actions. Whether it be a toxic relationship, whether it be like applying, are you going to let your anxiety control you or are you going to ask someone out? Are you going to let your anxiety control you or are you going to apply for a job? Are you going to let your anxiety control you or are you going to sign up to learn how to play the piano? What do you control? Very little. And the problem is that everyone is so bent out of shape, everyone spends so much time trying to chase success that they forget action. And what you essentially find is that the people who are successful are the ones who devote themselves to action. So devote yourself to action. That's all you need to do. Just get up and act. And you're like, but it may fail. Yes, you're correct. It may fail. It will probably fail. And then if you do it again, the chances of failure are lower. You do it again, the chances are lower. You do it again, the chances are lower. And then depending on your beliefs, you know, if you believe in God and whatnot, hopefully there's a pity timer. You never know, right? So I think maybe getting, getting into HMS as a research assistant was my five-star pity timer. 